Welcome everybody, I'm Dr. Sam Spinelli with Citizen Athletics and today is May 1st. This is the start of a 30 day transformation that I'm about to undergo. I'm looking to create some substantial change, some noticeable changes in my physique, my mindset, and also my health. I'll be honest, quarantine has been a challenge for me. I've fallen off my regular exercise routine. I've fallen off a lot of my good healthy patterns that normally lead me to making smart choices in my nutrition. And instead I've fallen into the case of being much more inactive and I've had some physique changes, some strength changes, and also just the way that I feel. And I'm just sick of it. Normally when people go around doing transformations, they make a lot of mistakes, they do a lot of very aggressive things, and they try to create changes in the short term that then dissipate once they stop. My goal is over the next 30 days to do a lot of sustainable things, a lot of smart things, and explain why I'm doing them so that you can replicate at least in some way and hopefully have some changes for yourself. For people who are looking to have a drastic weight drop, lose 20 pounds in the next month, this is probably not the right video for you. For the people who are looking to lose weight and keep it off, this video is for you. So one of the first things we wanna try and do is have our home prepared, get our base set up so you have the most success possible. And then one of the best things that we can do with that is outline our kitchen so we have tons of options for us. So we're not trying to struggle and figure out something to eat. So having some good protein sources like eggs, egg whites, Greek yogurt, and then any sort of meat options that you enjoy. And then also having some other options like vegetables. That way you can pair and have a fulfilling meal. These can help add fiber and fill you up. Having some fruit, fruit is a great option as well. It's a good way to get some light sugar as well as having some more fiber content. Having some starch options like potatoes, rice, they help to round out your diet. And then some other things that can be really helpful, options like diet beverages, some different soda waters. You're gonna want something to add some flavor in and helps keep it a little bit more interesting in your rotation. Some things to snack on. There's a lot of different options out there but essentially we're looking at things that are gonna be lower in calorie. Puffed options are usually pretty good. And then some other things that help to give you a little sweet treat. You know, this is gonna be a journey. We're gonna look at 30 days to try and have a significant change. And across that, you're not gonna be able to say no to every temptation. So if you can find some things that you're able to say yes to that are better options, it's gonna be really helpful. To help get my step count up, something I've been doing is going for short, frequent walks. I just go out, bust out about a thousand, two thousand steps. It doesn't take too long. I can usually get it done in about 10 to 15 minutes. And it makes a good dent in the day. And it also helps to break up the monotony of when I sit for longer periods of time. I found that it's been really beneficial and gives me some relief. And I get out and I enjoy the wonderful wildlife that's in my area. All right, so we're 10 days into this journey, one third of the way through. And I just wanted to give an update and discuss some of the things I've been doing and also give an update on how it's gone. Right now, I'm down about four pounds and that's gonna equate out to a little bit more than two pounds a week. For most people, that's a pretty fast amount of weight loss and usually we're gonna be aiming for about one to two pounds a week and then try to see that maintained for a few weeks in a row. Uh, I know that I've lost probably a little bit of water weight because I had been eating a lot more before and it was uh, understandable for me to have a little bit faster results. I'm gonna expect that they're gonna slow down over the rest of the 30 days. I don't know that this is inherently all fat mass loss, it's probably very unlikely and it's a, mostly a combination of some fat loss, some glycogen uh, loss, and that compounds with some water loss. I have reduced some of my carbohydrates. I still am eating a fair amount of them, but overall I'm eating less food, which will inherently mean I'll have a loss in some of those things. When I started this, I wanted it to be a very sustainable journey, something that would allow me to continue on past the 30 days and maintain my results. And in doing so, it had to be something that would not interfere drastically with my life, something that would not be overly challenging and require a ton of mental uh, effort so, to be able to overcome. And so I picked a few, a few things that would really uh, align with that. And these were things like walking 8,000 steps a day. Before starting this, I was about 4,500 to 5,000 steps a day ballpark. And I wanted to get that up higher because number one, it coincides with generally burning more calories. Two, I think is really good for my overall health. And then three, it's gonna be something that's gonna be beneficial because I was dealing with some minor aches and pains and just getting more motion is really helpful for that. So I aimed for 8,000 steps a day and so far up to this point, I haven't hit that every single day, but my average is above 8,000, just over. 
I've had a few days where I was in the more like 65 to 7,500. And then I've had a few days where I'm more in the 9,000 to 10,000, depending upon how busy I am. Another thing that I did was set a goal to get at least eight hours of sleep a night. For a lot of people, more sleep is conducive to more weight loss. There's various factors that can be considered for this, such as just being asleep, you're not gonna eat more. But they've also found that having more sleep reduces your overall appetite, and it's gonna therefore allow you to be able to manage your hunger to a better degree. So for a lot of people, just increasing your sleep a little bit can make a big difference. I was relatively consistently at about six to seven hours of sleep a night. I was uh, occasionally at eight, but not very consistently. And for me, it was something I really wanted to push up because I knew it would be really beneficial for not only my hunger, but my mood and also just my general work. So I tried to make it a big priority the last little while. And it was a little challenging a few days, but overall I've been able to get to a pretty much eight or more hours. I found that um, if I do struggle with it, it's more that I've had some challenges in just generally sleeping, but not necessarily the time that I go to lay down. And that's been a big change and I found that when I do get up in the morning, I'm definitely a lot more refreshed and I do find that I'm able to control my uh, hunger swings a little bit more. Now, I don't know how that's gonna necessarily translate as it continues on and I do get hungrier, but hopefully it's gonna be helpful in the next few weeks. Another thing I've been doing is exercising every day. Now, I would normally not tell people that they have to do this, but I'm doing the workout for cancer with BC Cancer Foundation. And one of the things was to do exercise every single day for the month of May. So it just coincided with this really well. Um, in that, I'm not full on working out every day. Right now, I'm doing the Sys Athletics Home Muscle Building Program, which is a five day per week program. And it takes me about you know 40 to 65 minutes and I crush that, and then on the days where I'm not doing it, so the two days per week, I just go in, do a really light workout, and just hit a few things that I didn't do the other days. I don't make it very challenging, but it just gets me exercising to some level, and uh, another thing that's really helped with is getting in my steps, because when I do that, I keep my phone on me now just to make sure that I'm tracking it a little bit easier, and I ensure that I'm getting in a little bit more volume of general activity on days where I'd normally probably sit even more. Earlier in the video, I talked about how you wanna build up your home base. And I discussed having a lot of fruits and vegetables in the house. And for me, one of the big goals that I set out was to eat at least six servings of fruits and vegetables a day. I have crushed that. I've been averaging closer to 10 servings per day. And I think it's been really helpful in managing my hunger and finding a way to be able to minimize my desire for other cravings. One of the things that I've decided to do is when I know I'm hungry, I go and I get one or two servings of vegetables, and I try and eat those first. And that just is kind of like my non-negotiable thing I do. And that way it's a little bit of a reduction in my um, volume in my stomach that would then allow me to otherwise smash a ton of food. I'm not actively tracking how many calories I'm eating. I'm just trying to eat to where I feel content and then stop and I'm not going to bed hungry. I'm not forcing myself to drink tons and tons of water to ignore it. I'm just trying to use a few different strategies to reduce my likelihood of crushing a lot of food when I'm maybe not as hungry as I think. The last thing I wanted to touch on is I'm trying to get a lot more protein in. On average, I'm eating about one gram per pound of body weight. That's on the higher side of things of what I would normally recommend for people. It's usually a good way that we're able to passively reduce overall calorie count. When you're eating more protein, usually you don't have as much desire to eat a lot of other calories. And so I've found that it's a good way for me, and I get this in through a lot of egg whites, I have some protein shakes, which I wasn't normally having as much before, and then some lean chicken products. And this is just a very simple change for me that's allowed me to ensure that I get a lot more protein than I was, because I was probably more in the 0.7 to 0.85, and I found that I just naturally am not eating as many calories overall because of that. So we're on day 16, just over halfway through this 30 day transformation. And I think it's going really well. My weight's down another pound since the 10 day check-in that I did. And so that means I'm down about a total of five pounds, about two and a half kilos. So for me, that's a pretty good amount of change. Getting enough protein can be really hard for a lot of people. I don't think that you have to have protein shakes, but they're definitely a viable option for a lot of people. For me, I've been having one to two protein shakes per day just because as I'm trying to eat a slightly lower amount of total volume, I find that it's harder to get in enough total protein per day. 
um, through whole food sources. So far, my hunger levels haven't been too crazy. My cravings haven't been outrageous. I've had the odd thing of chocolate here and there, but I haven't like gone on a binge and gone all out. Um, but I'm definitely starting to have those desires. So I'm gonna try to stick with not doing that and delay it as long as I can, because I think that it's gonna be most beneficial to hold it off and it'll help with my overall cravings on a regular basis. But I know that I'm gonna have to figure out a time to put that in. I'm probably gonna end up doing that around like seven days out from finishing and that way I'll be strong to finish off, but we'll see how it goes. So there's five days left in the 30 day transformation. I just wanted to give a quick update. Things have been going well. I've lost another couple pounds and I've been very consistent about everything. And I can see that the progress is starting to pay off. I've been definitely having a lot more cravings. Like last night, I dug in and had a Dairy Queen Blizzard and it was fantastic. But otherwise, I've been relatively able to maintain things. I've been utilizing a lot of creative options for my nutrition to help support me not getting into crazy in a, into my cravings too deeply. And then my sleep has been a bit all over the place and I'm waking up more, but I'm trying to still go to bed and wake up at the same times, but I've been waking up more, which has been a little bit more stressful on my sleep consistency. But overall, things are going well and I feel like the last few days are gonna make uh, a good change and then we'll discuss what I'm gonna do after that. So it's day 30, time for the final check-in and to finish this off. It's gone really well overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. I've collectively lost right around 8.8 .8 pounds or four kilos. And you know, I think that's a very realistic amount across a 30 day time span with some dedicated effort. I didn't um, go crazy and do outrageous things. I just stuck to those foundational sustainable habits that I outlined at the start. I tried to maintain eight hours of sleep pretty much every night. I think, you know, overall, most nights I was successful. I tried to stick with around 8,000 steps per day and across the, the 30 days, there's probably been about two or three days where I didn't reach that. But most days I was able to get more around eight to 10,000 per day, which I'm really happy with. And then I tried to maintain eating around six servings of vegetables a day, pretty much looking to get one serving every time I ate. I found that it was really helpful to just go and say, Okay, if I'm gonna have a meal or a snack, I just start off with a vegetable and crush it. That way I ensure that I get a little bit more fiber, a little bit more filling with low calories and help me maintain my nutrition. I also made sure to get around one gram per pound of body weight. Now I didn't measure this or track anything through the whole time. I just eyeballed it. I do have experience with tracking, so I have a pretty good knowledge. I know roughly how much is in a scoop of whey protein. I know how much is roughly in a chicken breast and all these other things. And so it made it a little bit easier on me, but for other people, tracking is really beneficial to learn that. I worked out every single day of the month in some capacity. And that was a part of that BC Cancer Foundation discussion I had. And you know, it was very interesting. Um, I wouldn't really recommend that for everyone. I do think that you should try to be active every day, but you probably don't need to work out every day. Um, especially if you are getting those steps in, that's usually gonna be more than enough for most people, at least if you're exercising a few days a week in a more formalized workout plan. So I'm gonna switch back over to that as I go forward because you know, I found that normally when I work out, I have usually, if I'm training four or five days a week, I'll have three or four workouts that are really good and then one or two that are eh. Whereas across this, I found most of my workouts in the week end up being the meh. And I really like to get back to having some more quality workouts in. And it's just hard to push really hard when you have, uh, when you know that you need to work out every single day. And so it restricts how hard you can push on some days. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna switch over to about five days per week. And then on the other days, just do some light physical activity, like go for a walk with my daughter or go for a bike ride. But I won't be pushing it for a real workout. Arguably the most important part of this video is how to do this for yourself. What can you do to have a transformation where you lose weight and then keep it off? And I think outlining various habits kind of like what I did is beneficial. Not putting yourself to strict rules, but things that you're aiming for that are within reach, doable, and don't take out an outrageous effort to do. You know, for most people, trying to add in about 30 minutes of sleep a night is a very realistic thing. So for most people, you know, the average adult is sleeping somewhere between six and seven hours a night. So if you can creep that up a little bit, it'll have a very good impact on, you know, your general demeanor, your hunger levels, 
and so many more benefits. Increasing how much protein you take in a day, most people are under eating how much they could have. And so if we can creep that up a little bit to at least 0.7 grams per pound of body weight, you're probably gonna be better off. Another one is that vegetable intake. Really bringing that up can be helpful in so many different ways. I think it's a very underrated one. And for a lot of people, just starting off with having a meal where you eat some, in general, is gonna be helpful. Even if it's just you know one serving at each meal, or just having them as a form of a snack. There's so many different ways you can do it, but getting in one or two more per day can make a huge difference for a lot of people. And then another big one is that step count. I think that for me, this was the biggest difference. You know, going to 8,000, it's taking deliberate effort every single day to make sure I do that. If you have a smartphone, if you have a Fitbit, anything like that that tracks steps, check what you've been doing and then just try to add a little bit. The last thing for this video is what am I gonna do next? A lot of times we see that people have this very big tendency to have a drastic weight loss and then they have a drastic weight gain. It's the classic yo-yo diet. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna spend the next 60 days and take this out to 90 days in total and focus on just maintaining it. I'm gonna hopefully maybe lose a couple more pounds but I have no expectation that I have a significant weight loss. I'm gonna try to stick to roughly the same habits I might increase my steps a little bit. Um, I'm gonna pull back on my number of workouts per week, but I'm gonna try to keep everything else relatively the same and just try to be consistent and show myself that I can do that. In the past, I've been a person where I will go through a bulking phase and then a cutting phase, and I think it's gonna be really helpful to just to show that you can do this and that you don't have to have the weight gain after the weight loss. And that's where I think a lot of these sustainable habits are really coming well because if you can make these smaller changes that don't drastically weigh on you, then you can be able to do them more consistently for the long term and be able to keep the results that you put in the work for. Hopefully you found this helpful. It gave a little bit of insight into some different options that some people might not have realized. It's really common for the fitness industry to put forth that you have to be aggressively dieting or aggressively exercising or all these other different things, but that instead we don't have to do that. It's being consistent about multiple different things and making small changes for a long time can have a substantial impact and give you good results. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys at day 90.